Welcome to Formation, a weekly conversation for followers of Jesus. And those followers include Kara Watts, Shannon Moore, and I'm Renee Hoke. We're glad you you're with us too. You I don't did. like to introduce yourself I sometimes. I usually don't because <laughs> everybody so, knows who I'm you so are. So well known. <laughs> it's not necessary. It's not necessary for me. <laughs> It's just Renee. She's one of those one name just celebrities. Just one name people. <laughs> Renee. We've been having fun this summer. Um, I've been challenging my colleagues here by not giving them the scripture in advance. So we'll all have fresh eyes. We're going to read a parable only found in the Gospel of Mark today. Okay. So I want you to get your Bible as well and turn with us to Mark chapter 14. And you're going to hear the NRSV, New Revised Standard Version, that translation first, then the Contemporary English Version, and then the message. And so that'll be a few verses that you're going to hear a couple of times. And then we'll start our conversation by Shannon and Kara saying, well, what caught you from the very beginning in those readings? What, what detail interested you or what confusing thing happened? Because... We are scratching our heads over some of these parables and saying, what's up with that? <laughs> Which is borrowed from Saturday, Saturday Night, Night Live. Live. I commend to you those skits. Yeah. <laughs> they not, are my favorite. All right. We're not quite that funny. <laughs> so we are Mark. We are at Mark. Did I tell you 14? You did. You just it's actually said 14. 13. Oh, okay. 13. Okay. I was trying to trick you. 13 verses 32 through 37. Mm -hmm. I will read first. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake." For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. That's very dramatic, isn't it? It is. Very dramatic. Are you awake now? I'm, I'm awake. All right, let's hear I'm your ready. version. Okay. No one knows the day or the time. The angels in heaven don't know, and the Son himself doesn't know. Only the Father knows. So watch out and be ready. You don't know when the time will come. It is like what happens when a man goes away for a while and places his servants in charge of everything. He tells each of them what to do, and he orders the guard to keep alert. So be alert. You don't know when the master of the house will come back. It could be in the evening or at midnight or before dawn or in the morning. But if he comes suddenly, don't let him find you asleep. I tell everyone just what I have told you. Be alert. And this is the message, a paraphrase. But the exact day and hour, no one knows that. Not even heaven's angels, not even the Son, only the Father. So keep a sharp lookout, for you don't know the timetable. It's like a man who takes a trip, leaving home and putting his servants in charge, each assigned a task, and commanding the gatekeeper to stand watch. So stay at your post, watching. You have no idea when the homeowner is returning, whether evening, midnight, cockcrow, or morning. You don't want him showing up unannounced with you asleep on the job. I say it to you, and I'm saying it to all. Stay at your post. Keep watch. So what, what grabs you? This is very dramatic. It is. I, <laughs> I'm laughing this, uh, this whole time. I noticed time. that. I, some people would be concerned about this, but <laughs> somehow Shannon finds it humorous. I, Please share with us why that is. I got this this flash of a very clear memory about this exact text um, from when I was nine years old. I clearly remember being in Sunday school in the fourth grade, just as clear as as anything. And I was a very anxious child about the end of the world. Any any kind of end of the world discussion lessons, anything would, would terrify me. And I remember um, our Sunday school teacher starting the lesson by saying, which would be better? We hadn't read it yet, but like, which would be better for a teacher to say, I'm going to be out of the room and, you know, Kara, you take names and I'll be back in 10 minutes or 
for the teacher to just leave and not say when she was coming back. And I always got the right answers in Sunday school. And I said, well, the 10 minutes, because she's telling the truth. And everybody said, no, because then, you know, they, everybody knew intuitively where this sort of scripture was headed. And I was so embarrassed that I got it wrong. And then when I realized we were going to be talking about the end of the world for the whole Sunday school class, I got very anxious and upset. I, all of this just fell on me while we were reading Aww, this, this text. Poor Shannon. Um, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. And you so get, I'm still funny. not sure why that was the wrong answer. Because if the if the teacher said, I'll be back in 10 minutes, then everybody would act up and cut up and talk and not do their work until nine minutes passed. And then they would, would straighten, straighten up. up right before oh, she came back in the room. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if they didn't know, they had to behave the, the whole time. time. The whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And Is looking, that kind of looking back at it, I mean, my Sunday school teacher, that was a pretty good analogy it's a for, wonderful analogy. Mm -hmm. yeah. for this lesson, if you're going to teach this to a fourth yeah. grader a nine a nine so year old. what's jesus point don't act up <laughs> settle you know be on your best behavior i don't know may i mean be ready i don't know i i've got a lot of baggage with these kind of these kind of texts but i mean I, one of the things i was taught growing up at home and at church was live like you might die at any mm -hmm. second. And and there was this whole Because you don't want Jesus to come back and, and catch I, you acting like a fool. Yes, and I remember my mom one time lost her temper at, at something. And I remember her very clearly saying, if I had died, I would have busted hell right open. Wow. It didn't, you know, not, it didn't matter all of the wonderful things that she'd done in her life or you know, all of the, the faithfulness that she right. exhibited. But in that moment... It's whatever you're doing right at, that, at the moment at that, that Jesus moment, I returns. Have, I would have busted hell wide open. And so I, all of that is just... That makes you different. not anticipate in a happy way <laughs> Jesus coming back to us, does it? No, it doesn't. It's like, it's, it's it's like, like it's a Jesus nightmare. comes back yeah. and goes, gotcha. Yeah, Yeah, I gotcha. And even my, my children, I know I've mentioned this before, but my children's... Um, Bible story book had a, an illustration of Jesus' return, and everyone was running away <laughs> and oh, looking no. terrified. So I, no, you know, that's all a problem. Of, yeah, I'll bring it to you and show it to you sometime. That's a problem. Um, but I don't know. I think there's, I think there's an element of living a faithful life of, of, of putting. Uh, that the way that you that your faith is reflected in the way you lived mm -hmm. in this, and I think there's a way to to look at it without it being a threat. So this whole yes. chapter of Mark is about end times persecution. It's a scary chapter mm -hmm. all the way through. Mm -hmm. This is at the end of it. One of the things in the commentary was no matter when the persecution might come, followers of Jesus are to live faithful, vigilant lives in the certainty that the sun will be victorious over the chaos, the sun, S-O-N. The same is true for Jesus, which reveals his true humanity. Even Jesus doesn't know. Only God knows mm -hmm. when that is coming. But there's a little bit according... Which brings up a Trinity question, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> which, <laughs> but the, the commentary also says the late 60s and the fall of the temple in 70 A.D. Mm -hmm. um, most likely preceded this writing, mm -hmm. and that that persecution and destruction, this, is, in this, this context, was written right. in the midst of trying to make sense out of the destruction that had already happened. And there was a belief, I mean, that, that Jesus would be back. An imminent return. An imminent mm -hmm. return. Mm -hmm. Not... You know, two thousand years later, right? Yeah. Like this was any at any moment, right? You know, by the time this was written, like at any moment, yeah, Jesus' return is is here, and so in our perspective, it has to shift in a way, right? If you're, though, I do know folks that expect Jesus to return at any mm -hmm. moment, um, but I think for mainline denominations like ours. Um, I don't think it's a, a way to uh, get out of jail free card, right. but um, 
I think it's a different perspective than, I don't know. Now I'm feeling I would hope if I get a chance to see Jesus that I'm not running away from Absolutely. Jesus. So here, here is an interesting comment about this. Mark, Mark, the writer, artfully and forcefully disappoints the reader who expects a clear strategy for how to proceed in, in life in the wake of destruction. We're talking about the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Verses 34 through 37 present a parable of absence. In the absence of Jesus until his return, the church is called to do Christ's work of healing the sick, feeding the hungry, working for justice. Do you think that's in this parable? What do we do while, while we're waiting for Jesus to come back? But that, well, if that's not explained in this parable. No, but. But be faithful. Well, yeah. but that's, those are Jesus-like things to do. Right. And in, in, my, in the version that I read, you know, the, the man leaves the servants in charge of the house. If Jesus is leaving us in charge of the things that he would do, taking care of the least, the lost, and the, what's the other one? The Losers. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Last. Phrase? The last, the least, and the lost. Yes. Um, that, Not losers. That. He just loves them too. Um, you know, we would be expected to do those things that that Jesus did in his earthly ministry. Right. And it never ends. I mean, there's <laughs> there's always someone to care for, someone to to stand up for, right. to, to love. Right. And to me, I it's that, that opposite idea of this constantly anticipating Jesus. And instead, it moves me to the thinking of how do we bring kingdom right mm -hmm. here and now. So we've been put in yeah. charge. We've been given tasks, the work of the master right. in this. Yeah. And we should be about that work. Yeah. How do we... Not just stand and peeking out the window to yeah. see if the master's coming back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I... And when we think about, I mean, just uh, our world is hard right now. It yeah. is hard to find the kingdom in the midst mm -hmm. of the the chaos and the hatred and all of the division, the violence and all of that. And so, you know, I think maybe to say, uh, you know, Jesus, just come now and take care of all of this. The hard work is saying we have to find the kingdom in the midst of this. Mm -hmm. We have to bring that. Got you know Jesus' message of, of love and peace here yes. and now, that's great. but that's hard. That's so keep really at hard. your post. Sounds to me like somebody who's not working on the kingdom. They're standing and looking out the window, mm -hmm. so they could, could be the first one to see Jesus coming back, mm -hmm. as opposed to doing the work that we've been given right. to do, right. ushering in the kingdom mm -hmm. while we're waiting for yeah. the final kingdom. I think so. If we are doing the work we are called on, then we don't need to run away when Jesus no. shows up. That's just really terrible. <laughs> well, and nothing about that the way so, Jesus has lived. That's so not yeah. what would say that, run. Uh, that's not aligned with who Jesus calls us to be, is it? <laughs> run. <laughs> there he is. That's terrible. I hope nobody else hope nobody else has that impulse that uh oh, now we're in trouble. He's back. Well, I bet anybody who had that Bible story book did. <laughs> <There's that. laughs> oh and a lot of gosh. kids who went to the dentist. Remember, they were always at the dentist. Those is those blue Bible story books. Did you ever see those? No, we had these. Do you have those? Yeah, I do want to see. Why were they at the dentist? I don't know. I think that company used to like give them to businesses and stuff oh. back in the fifties and sixties. So wow. Jesus came came back, and they were at the dentist. Is that a good thing no. or a bad thing? No, the books. Oh, they the, were at the, oh, at the dentist. <laughs> I'm so confused. Now we're scratching our heads, not over the parable, but our conversation. <laughs> I was like, don't be at the dentist when Jesus no, no, returns. No, 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 no. You have to uh, jump out of the chair. The no, no, no. Every, in the illustration, okay, everybody was in the field. It. No, but the books, okay. in addition to being at my grandmother's house, were at the dentist's office. At the office. dentist's yeah. okay. office. Oh, I got gosh, it now. That's funny. <laughs> Well, this is very... Well, you see what happens what, when we what's don't... What's up with that? We're, 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 we're not given the, the text in advance. <laughs> all Some, kinds of stuff comes sometimes up. Sometimes we leave the path all together. <laughs> and we're glad you're with us when we leave the we path. We are, we are. And now we'll try to stay. We'll look forward to the next conversation. We're always so grateful that you join us. And we'll be... Whether here. it's on video or podcast. That's right. Yeah. Two ways to join us. 
Remember, don't read the Bible while you're driving. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye.